Sony turntables. Now this is one that I picked up locally for I think about 30 bucks. Complete in box. It is a model from the 90s. It's the PS slash LX 150H. One of the reasons I got this is because if you may or may not seen from my channel or my previous uploads onto my personal channel, I started a 90s only Sony audio system. Right now I have a CD player, I have the amp receiver, and then I have speakers, all from the 90s. Also, as I might have mentioned, you might have seen, it turns out that my primary turntable, the one from the 70s, has been having some issues. So, until that gets serviced fully, I want another temporary unit. Now this one did have the manual with it, so that's good. Nothing too difficult, you can still get the PDFs for this online. I will link the Sony official PDFs like I do usually. styrofoam, the bag. There would have probably been a few more things that were included with this one originally came out, but I don't have it, and usually getting this much is not that common anymore. A bit of the time when I find electronics, people throw out the boxes and manuals completely. Here we have it. 90's turntable. There is a needle on it. Uh, the needle seems to be a little rough. I don't think I need to replace the cartridge though. And then I have one or two small issues with it, which we'll go over eventually. Now we might as well go over the cables that are attached to the back. Both of these are attached directly to the main parts of the thing, so you're not really removing them. You have your standard power cable for the US. And then you have some stereo RCA cables for left and right channel. There's no phone over this unit, so you don't have to worry about having an amp that has one of those. So this would work on even modern units. Now this particular one was built in Korea. Usually with Sony products, you see them usually built in Japan, if they were made in the 80s or earlier. Or they might have been outsourced to China, possibly Malaysia, Korea sometimes in the 90s. I don't know what's with these little two stickers here. I'm not going to bother peeling them off. We have this sticker here. We have the model number and then what the unit is on the back. And then on the bottom, which I noticed a little bit ago, Now you can see on the bottom there are a few things that we can adjust. Here's the 45 and the 33 speed adjusters, which is mildly difficult because it's on the bottom there, not out of reach while you're running it. I don't think there's any way that you could safely adjust that while playing the actual thing to see if it's running at the right speed. Then you have the Q adjustment over there, and we have this little schematic right here. Oh, here's another change I like to the Sony audio equipment is turntables after a certain point have little rubber legs at four different points as usual instead of having them at each four corners they move some of them down to these points so that way they would fit on top of your standard audio equipment most CD players slash amps and stuff were only so deep so if it were up to here it would not sit down on that level I like the 70's model vinyl player which I use primarily this one actually matches the aesthetics and look of the 90's setup partially because it is from the 90s. Now one thing that annoys me is for some reason these hinges don't seem to go all the way back and hold this in place. So what I have to do is usually remove it whenever I play an album. Up front there's some simple settings. We just have the speed setting which we can either have at 33 or 45 speed. And then there's the reject button which unfortunately does not work so we're gonna probably take this apart and look at it. The arm does have a little latch thing here to hold it in place. So you can take that, move it slightly out of way, lift that up, and that will keep it in place until you set it down. You don't have to worry about adjusting this as much as you would an older player. Uh, everything is handled with this arm. Now let's find a little vinyl to put on this. What I'll be using is one of my beat up copies of Fragile's Yes. Just line it up, push it down. That one was a little rough to go into place.
like I said before, it looks like that the reject and the auto reject doesn't seem to be working on this unit. So I hit reject or eject, whichever you want to refer to. This model refers to it as reject. Nothing. So what I have to do is lift it up, move it over, set it down safely, let it finish, lock it in place, and then remove the vinyl. Now the question is, will I be able to fix this easily or not? So we'll probably have to pop this open and see what we can do. Alright, now that we've went over the basics of it and I've showed you the problem with it, we'll just peek through the manual and I'll see if there's anything that can help me. I'll also remove the dust cover. Now when I got this, it actually wasn't fully assembled. This part was off, this part had fell off in it. And this little thing doesn't use a direct drive, it uses like a little band. What you have to do is kind of wrap it around this metal part and then it clips onto this little spinning part and the one gear moves it while the other gear kind of holds it in place. And we have to figure out what is keeping the eject thing from reading. I'm not sure if the manual will be any help with this. Alright, as I thought, it seems to have all the basic info about putting that on when you get it. Uh, it mentions what the buttons do, and then it does mention that the reject button kind of stops it from playing. It doesn't seem to mention how to fix if that doesn't work. There is mention of the stylus, cleaning it, the basic specifications and size and whatnot. And then in the back there are a few troubleshooting things, but there doesn't seem to be one for if the reject button doesn't work. Alright, I did find a service manual. It does have the full diagram, but the diagram is not in a form that I can easily read. I do assume that this part here happens to be something that's causing my issue. Because it looks like this is directly attached to the reject arm, but that does not look like that would be a place that it would sit. I just happened to order an iFixit anti-static tray. So what I'll do is put the screws in there. Definitely don't want to lose them. be able to just slide this off. The rubber legs are actually attached to that, so it doesn't look like there's any real damage. Now we can see the underside. Well, we gave it a little bit of a shot, but I think at this point I'm going to give up on repairing the reject button. I have had no luck in the manual telling exactly how the physical layout should be, and I've tried what I could to figure out how mechanically it works, but I'm not getting anywhere too far, so we'll just wrap up that part of the video. Well, there you go. There's another overview video. We didn't quite fix the issue. If I do find an answer for it, if anybody has any ideas, please let me know. I will do a follow-up video if I can do that. And I might need a new needle for it soon. I feel like the needle's starting to get a bit scratchy, and messing around with all that stuff might have damaged a little bit. So until next time, everybody out there, stay safe, enjoy yourself, and I'll see you again soon.